Yes, we're back again with another top 10 hits of the year. This time looking at 2020, about a month ago, I did the year 2021 and told you in that video that I was pretty eager to try and work backwards throughout the years and give you my top 10 for each year. Depending on how far we go back, we shall see. But I especially wanted to complete the 2020 so far to give you guys a def definitive list for each year of this decade. And then from there, we might even do a decade so far video where I talk about what are the current best hit songs of the 2020 so far. But before that, we have to do the year 2020, of course. Hindsight helps with the list like this because now we're looking back at a year, four years on and seeing which songs have stuck, which songs haven't, which songs you still go back to, which songs might have grown on you since then as well, which there are a couple of them on this list, I will say. But for me, this is an interesting list because I found it a little odd and jaggedy and I feel like there's no real rhyme or reason to the actual top 10 list. But they are all songs that of course came out either in the year 2020 or were hit songs in the year 2020. That is the only criteria for a list like this. It had to be popular in that particular year. Is there any more wasting time here? Shall I waste any more time? I don't think I need to do that. I think we can just get on with it. As always, let me know what your list would be in the comments. Check out my Patreon as well, because you can support me over there and there and get requests for lists like this in the future and other types of videos and other perks as well. Shout outs, being part of the Discord server, all that kind of stuff. Please consider supporting me over on there. And as I always do, let's start the list with a couple of honourable mentions. Starting with Stupid Love by Lady Gaga. I actually thought Chromatica was a pretty good album and I think people were a little harsh on it actually. I thought for the dance pop elements that she was bringing to the table, I think she really sold it. And Stupid Love was a really good, quirky, classic Lady Gaga banger where she has that kind of attitude that weird personality coming through with just such a bombastic chorus while also being super fun and energetic and lively and catchy as well it was just everything that she does so well in one track and considering quite quite a bit of her 2010 stuff actually hasn't stuck with me personally i think some of it's kind of a little bit dated or some of it's a little bit meh looking back on it some of it's really good don't get me wrong but for me i thought stupid love was definitely a nice return to form for gaga next honorable mention i always give you two if i have enough to give you two but this year i definitely do have enough to give you two adore you by harry styles i actually think this album had potential to be really good based on singles like this but unfortunately i don't think the entire thing lived up but i think this is a really sweet catchy pop tune there's not much more to say on it i think it's good with those two honorable mentions out the way let's get on with the official list which is of course just my own personal opinion i could never claim to make an objective list of course but in my opinion these are the top 10 best popular hit songs of the year 2020 let's go ice lemonade my neck was tripping Look, with my first pick here at number 10, I'm expecting a few people to roll their eyes and maybe even question my entire taste based on this. I'm not going to bat or go dying on a hill for this song. I totally get that. There are a lot of people out there that think this is really crappy, trashy, tacky. It's in fact all of those things. But for me personally, I just think it's a super enjoyable track where to Don Tolliver absolutely kills it with his vocals and his melodies and when he's at his a game he comes out with just incredible earwormy catchy moments that for a track like this i think he is at that a game level and every line every word just sticks in your head it like rots in your brain it is super sugary and sweet how melodic this track is with the internet money production of course like it is very much designed for that kind of quick in and out catchy maybe party song that doesn't have <laughs> any depth at all and i'm sure as more time passes we'll look back on this track and even view it in that kind of way but for me in the moment a few years down the line i still get a lot of enjoyment out of this track like i say it's sugary sweet it's catchy i'm not gonna go you know batting for the lyrics because they're pretty crappy but still sometimes you can just ignore that and if a pop song is just super enjoyable I'll, I'll take it for what it is my number nine pick is a track that was very much destined to be 
a massive party banger and club banger for the entire year. But sadly, based on how the timing of it all came through, it didn't quite work out that way because we all got locked inside for the whole year, didn't we? Yeah, it was a, it was a bit of a thing, you know, COVID, it, it stopped us all in our tracks. And unfortunately, songs like this didn't quite get to live their fantasy in the way that they deserved. But it didn't stop it being a massive hit and it didn't stop people playing it to absolute death because... Well, it still became one of the biggest songs of the year. Yeah, Physical, Dua Lipa. Look, I'll be honest, Future Nostalgia was such a great album for 2020. It made my year-end list. It still is an album I still go back to. I think it's got some fantastic pop tracks. One of the best pop albums of the whole decade so far, for sure. Um, and Physical is a highlight on the album. It is just so upbeat. It's so just like energizing the moment you hear it you just kind of want to get up and get like pumped you kind of you want to go for a run even if you're not somebody that runs i'm sure when you hear this song you just kind of want to get out there and unleash everything just unleash all your energy it's one of those songs that just really pumps that into you it's such a great tune in that sense but also it's just um a really really like captivating vocal performance from Dua Lipa like just from the verses and then when you get to the chorus where she just explodes the fire ignites it is just so good so yeah this is an easy highlight for 2020 and pretty much any time a song from this album became a hit I would call it one of the best hits of that year I mean Levitating was literally my number one for 2021 uh, spoiler if you haven't seen that video already but it is yeah it is the number one for that year so of course all the other hits from such a great album are going to make this list a track that occupies a very similar space at number eight really rain on me lady gaga again being mentioned with ariana grande a really great collaboration that i feel like we've sort of let go a bit but i still think it's really sounding great as it did when it first came out i don't think it quite lit lit the stage in the way that people were thinking because it's lady gaga and ariana coming together but i don't really know what you could complain about with this it is just such an high energy again like physical high energy dance raver that isn't really gonna be a letdown in any case because both performers are just so good at putting these songs together we've heard ariana do it over the years too with tracks like break free into you she knows how to sell tracks like this and lady gaga is just a veteran in the game them two coming together dropping a massive bop i don't know why people don't talk about this as much now but i'm still listening to it i think it's great <laughs> Now, there's no point doing the huge preamble I just did for the previous Future Nostalgia anthem for another anthem from this very album that was a hit in the same year because I'd be wasting your time. Don't Start Now isn't really anything like physical. It has a bit more of a cocky, seductive, boss bitch energy to it that I think a lot of people really gravitate towards nowadays with their pop girlies dropping big bangers like this that have a lot more attitude that are not gonna be messing around with no boys that waste the girls time it's very much one of those type of tracks and yeah I, th I think it's really good uh, it's got a really interesting sort of structure to it where it doesn't necessarily have like you know, the, the formulaic sort of dance pop sound that a lot of the album did. I say formulaic not in a negative way. I just think when you listen to Future Nostalgia, they very much have that kind of high energy dance pop motifs that you've heard before and they're structured really well but this track does have a bit it has a different type of pacing to it the bass is a bit more uh, up, upbeat and a bit more prominent on this track it takes a little bit of a different turn when you get to the bridge of the track i think it sounds really great like i say it's got a lot of attitude it's super catchy and really put dua lipa on a new level because i think a track like new rules put her on a global map to the point where everyone was familiar with what she was like and her music suddenly became huge but i think don't start now really took the career off to a different level and i think it really cemented her as being like oh 
she, she's she's here to stay. This, this wasn't just a one hit wonder type deal. This wasn't a one album wonder type deal. She is here to stay and she really means business. So yeah, really good track. And uh, yeah, both of these two tracks from Future Nostalgia, as I've mentioned, really strong. Not two of my favorites from the album, but they were the hits of that year and they're still great anyway. Speaking of another massive album that took the world by storm in 2020, we can't not mention After Hours for the year 2020, which historically and notoriously became a massive snub at the year after Grammys, but it's really stood the test of time, hasn't it? And really has had people locked in for four years now. Heartless is a bit of an unusual hit from this album where by the other tracks that were massive hits, we're clearly pulling from the 80s classic synth pop playbook. I've already mentioned Save Your Tears in the 2021 video. Please, I keep mentioning that video, but you should go check that one out to see the entire list there. But of course, Blinding Lights 2 was a massive hit. Some of the other tracks had that kind of vibe to it as well. But Heartless just has way more of a stranger energy to it that just really feels like The weekend is absolutely pouring his life into the vocal performance. There's just a bit more of a dramatic feel to it. The instrumental is just absolutely booming with so many weird sounds that kind of just crash through. It just sounds massive. It sounds kaleidoscopic, but it also is kind of playing to The weekend's R&B strengths. The track just, just feel like it's a little bit more of that edge to it than it is just a straight pop tune. But God, it's really good. I mean, good God. As a massive weekend fan myself, you'd be never seeing me do a list like this where he hasn't got at least one song on it because he just seems to have that power in him now to just deliver hit after hit after hit. And I will probably eat it up every time. Speaking of another artist that seems to be a mainstay on these hit lists, We've got basically the biggest artist in the freaking world. But I knew you, playing hide and seek and giving me you. Yeah, we've got Taylor Swift's Cardigan at number five now. A album for her that really changed the total trajectory of her career. I think it was an album that really gave people more ammunition to label her as one of the best singer-songwriters of our time. Not only just one of the biggest, but it certainly gave people more reason to, you know, give her that huge amount of praise and ended up giving her massive amounts of accolades. And for an album like Folklore, I think it was definitely deserved. I think it was a, tr a very particular strategic move on her part to kind of go from Reputation and Lover, which were kind of some of her most basic albums ever, to then going into a more of a serious direction. It definitely was a clever move on her part and did provide us with some of her loveliest and sweetest songs so far. Cardigan being one of them, a really, really lovely track, delicately performed, the piano little dabs are absolutely beautiful. The vocal performance is really subdued. It's really nice and soft and delicate. It's a really lovely performance from her. And I think some of the writing as well is really strong on this one as well, where she's talking about how like, you know, when you're young, people think you don't really know what you're doing. And also the cardigan, you know, little motif that she throws in as well, where it's just like, it's an old cardigan, but when you put me on, you told me I was your favorite one. Very simple, but it gets the idea across. Yeah, I mean, in terms of hit songs, it's not your traditional hit track, but given it was Taylor Swift that released it, it was always gonna go to number one, obviously. And I can't really complain because it's really well written and really well done. And there were a few other tracks on this album too that I thought were really strong. They weren't quite massive hits though, or weren't released as singles in the same way or had that same kind of push to them. Similarly, the uh, last Great American Dynasty August as well, which has become a bit of a fan favorite. Those tracks for me as well, I think if they were as big, would be on this list, but it was Cardigan that was one of the main singles. So it's gotta be included. Perhaps a bit of a curveball here at number four, but I just think this song's great and wanted to include it. And it was a minor hit from this album that did have some massive hits on it, particularly Watermelon Sugar. But I really don't like that song, so you were never going to see that song on this list. But Golden, a track that was a top 40 hit in the UK, 
is my pick for Harry Styles' best song of this year and best hit song of this year too. Uh, I just wish he was always in this bag. I feel like he really tapped in something really good here. He's kind of like leaning into a bit more of a rockier sound, but he's not quite there. He's like flirting with it. And I think when he is kind of on those flirting lines with rock, he actually puts out better music than some of his other tracks, particularly when you compare it to, like what I said, Watermelon Sugar. Um, it's just way better than it. I just think that it's super fun, super enjoyable. Yeah, I mean, a really fun track from him, an opening track on the album that really set the tone well. The rest of the album doesn't live up to it, but I'll take this one. And number three, perhaps another curveball. I'm not entirely sure what people think of some of these songs. I haven't really seen much conversation about them, but I think this is one of Doja Cat's best tracks to date. And even with her latest album, Scarlet, I would still put it in that conversation. I just think she is, despite the fact saying that she just made all this music to sell out and didn't really have much faith in it and didn't really feel like it was authentic to who she was, surprisingly... She's actually pretty damn good at it. I wouldn't mind hearing more songs like this. Really slick, smooth, catchy, sexy pop tune from her here, Say So, which I think is basically better than most of her most recent album, most recent album. But maybe that's a bit of a hot take that people won't agree with. But I just think this slinky instrumental, I think the, uh, the singing, the vocals, super smooth, super super charismatic as well just makes for a really great track um yeah i mean I, i'm all for say so i think it's a great tune okay now the response to this track when it first came out was ridiculous was ridiculous i'm not here for it i'm not allowing it this is a great song and again similar to doja cat say so i'm not entirely sure how people generally feel about this track but nah come on it's great Now look, let's address the elephant in the room before we do move any further. And I have mentioned this quite a few times on this channel whenever this song has ever come up. Don't, don't worry about it. It is not the first time I am acknowledging this. But this is basically a, a, a Kevin Parker ripoff. Like, I am very much aware of that. And I'm not advocating for artists to basically <laughs> rip off the entire brand and aesthetic and vibe that an artist is very much kind of carved and basically made their own lane for years so i'm not i'm not gonna advocate for any of that and the connotations of suggesting this song is good could maybe make think people think that way i get it i i, I really do get it but it's just a great track <laughs> i'm sorry man but Bose malone ditching his whole hip-hop trap pop fusion thing that he was doing for the late 2010s some of it was actually okay, some of it was really not good, and basically just diverting in this total pop direction, like there is no denying it, this and Sunflower were basically him going, look, I'm just going to make pop tunes now, and you've got to kind of hand it to him, he isn't half bad at doing it, some of it isn't always great, I'll, I'll say that, and I'm not going to say that Post Malone is a great pop artist, but he has a knack for just really creating really odd unique vivid atmospheres that you can't really find anywhere else like even as i've mentioned tame impala in this segment and i've acknowledged that it sounds a lot like it with the instrumental vocally and atmospherically they're worlds apart and i feel like sometimes post malone just has this energy to his voice that just really fills out an entire room and just feels like it commands your your ears and your your attention and i think he does a good job of doing that on this track sometimes his warbles and his kind of blowouts with his voice do kind of you know sit a bit awkwardly on the ears like he's not an amazing singer but he really sells what he's going for in this track and i just think it's a really 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 captivating chorus really makes you kind of it captures that youthful energy in such a great way i really like this song i, I won't over explain it any more longer than i already have i think it's just great here we are now at number one yeah it's blinding lights
For these list videos, I tend to do kind of like a lead up tease for what my number one's gonna be, a preamble, talking about what it might be, explaining it. This needs no explanation. This needs no introduction. There is absolutely no point in talking in anybody into why this might be my number one hit song of 2020. It just has to be, doesn't it? I couldn't imagine it being any other song. Blinding Lights is generational. Blinding Lights is like no other in the world of pop music. It just is that good. And at this point, I've seen a few people go, oh, it's overplayed, it's overrated. And I'm not really going to begrudge people of that, considering there is no denying this song has been played to death. It is quite literally the most streamed song of all time as well. And yet, none of that matters to me. I think it is just one of those songs that is as good as everybody says it is. And I cannot find any words to detract from that. And there will never be a day where I will say it isn't that good or it is overrated. It is just that good to me, man. I'm sorry, it is. This song has the power, the energy, the drive, the vocals are just so blistering the instrumentation is blistering the bridge on this song is absolutely to die for this song just feels like a blockbuster event that you can't take your eyes away from you can't not look at you can't not want to be a part of it is just that good i i can't stress enough it's incredible and the weekend cemented himself as an absolute god as an absolute legend when he made this because i think up until this point he had hits don't get me wrong he had hits but i think he was always kind of maybe falling a little bit behind his kind of contemporaries he didn't quite have that one song that really defined who he was in the same way that maybe a drake would have for example maybe a taylor swift would have he ne he always had the massive hits he was charting with absolutely everything with features this that and the other he was huge, don't get me wrong, but that one song that just defines you as an artist, that puts you on that next step, that puts you on that new level, that takes you to a new height, that gives you the the opportunity to bloody do the halftime Super Bowl show, for God's sake, like that, that's a huge thing. And it was really this song, it was this era. And yeah, massively deserved, one of the best pop artists of our time. Of course, there's a lot of 80s influence, there's a lot of Michael Jackson influence, but he really takes it on his own, he takes it on in his own way, he puts his own spin on it and gives us just a totally fresh take on this era of music that he's very obviously inspired by. It's brilliant and I think it will age fantastically, it's just a no-brainer. And that is it from me, the top 10 best hit songs of 2020. Remember, these are the hits, these are the songs that charted, that had to be big in that particular year, that had to be a popular song in that year. These aren't the best overall songs. There is a video already on the channel if you do want to watch that. I did it four years ago. So check that one out if you do want to see my overall best songs of the year. And let me know your thoughts on this list. If you've enjoyed me going back and doing these lists, if you want to see more in the future as well, and tell me what your top 10 is in the comments. Remember, check out my Patreon to help with videos like this in the future. And yeah, that is it from me. Have a good day. Subscribe. Goodbye.